Hey data designer, welcome to my new recipe series. The goal with this series is to inspire researchers and evaluators to get out of their heads and start creating stuff. Before we get started, I'm trying to get to 1000 subscribers on YouTube. So if you could hit sub the subscribe button, like this video or leave a comment, that would be much appreciated. Have you ever tried to use the back of a screwdriver to hammer a nail into a wall? I certainly have. I Would it have been easier to use a hammer? Sure. But that would require going out to the garage and finding one. In a pinch, the screwdriver worked. What's the point? The first rule of creating stuff is to use the tools that you have on hand or the tools that you're most comfortable using. And for many of you, the chart building tool that you have at hand and are probably most comfortable using is Excel. Today, I'm going to walk you through the steps of creating a simple annotated column chart. We're going to start to create the column chart um, in Excel. Then we'll move over to Canva for the annotation. To start, I made up a little data table in Excel. I then highlighted the data table and then inserted a 2D column chart. Just in case you were wondering, it doesn't really matter if you choose clustered column or stacked column. Since I only have one column of data, it will look the same either way. Now that we have the chart, let's start cleaning it up. This is a preference, but my goal is to strip the chart down to its essence. This means deleting the grid lines. I also get rid of the X, Y axis values. Then I get rid of the title. After that, I click and go to Format Data Series. And this is where I can go down the gap width and reduce the space between the bars, which is going to make my bars bigger. My preference is usually 25%. I think it's a nice kind of compact chart. After that, I get rid of the random box around the chart by clicking on the full chart and then taking away the outline. And if you prefer not to have an x-axis line either, this is also removed by choosing the x-axis and clicking no outline. Finally, for any bar that I plan to color in the final infographic, I have to change the color of that specific bar. And if you have multiple bars that you want different colors, you have to select multiple bars and change the color. Right now, it doesn't need to be the final color. It just needs to be a different color from the other bars. You'll see why in a minute. You know, After all of that, I go ahead and right click on the chart and click Save as Picture. Then I want to save it as an SVG. This will give us the most flexibility and best resolution when we work on the image in Canva. All right, now we'll open up the Canva and create a blank presentation. I use a standard 16.9 presentation format for a lot of charts and small infographics. It's just easy. It works well on social media, it works well inside visual reports and slide docs. And of course, it, this also works really well if you're using it in presentations. Once I have a blank document, I can just drag and drop the SVG chart I just created in Excel. Just drag it, drop it right in there. OK, now that the chart is in Canva, let's make it into a little annotated infographic. If you click on the chart image inside of Canva, you'll notice at the top that it came in with three colors, the blue for the bars, the orange for the highlighted bar, and white for the background. What Canva does is it chooses all the different colors that came in. So that's why we needed to highlight the bar before it came in. This lets us switch the colors around as much as we want. So we can change, try different things, put it in brand colors, that kind of thing. I brought over the x-axis category names, but I want to recreate them inside of, with, of Canva with a different font. I could go back and redo this in Excel, but since it's just at the bottom, I can always just crop it by just double clicking on the image and like dragging up from the bottom. To add new category names, I'll just use text boxes. There's a keyboard shortcut in Canva. You just hit the T button, and a little text box will come up, and I just copy and paste, and you can work on the positioning and that kind of thing. I ended up changing the bar colors to gray with a blue highlight. Boring, I know, but a lot of professional stuff ends up being on a boring blue-gray scale. So we'll just do it this way for this. 
Now for placement, I like to use a little bit of measurement. And the easiest way to measure is to use grids inside of Canva. So I use this three column grid all the time, just so I can get a sense of space. For this one, I'll keep a margin around the page and just use the two right-hand columns from my chart aligned to the bottom of the page. Once I have a sense, I'll delete the grid. I can always get it back, but it makes for a good start. All right, the first thing to do is to create a nice little intro paragraph at the top of the page. This is your takeaway. You can even bold and match the color of your highlighted text inside to match the bar. Next, I'll add a bit of text to use as a kind of subheading or for further detail and context. Then I'll add a simple annotation box, uh, the color of the highlighted bar, putting in a little line connecting the annotation to the bar. Since I didn't include data labels in my original Excel chart, I'll go ahead and add those using text boxes. And really, that's the trade-off between doing this kind of thing in Canva versus Excel. It requires a little bit more manual work, but you get a lot more control over the design. And yes, I know Canva has a bar chart kind of creation tool, which is fine. I don't like it that much. I, I find this just as easy. Everything looked a little too plain, so I went ahead and added a rectangle behind the text at the top to separate it a bit. Just a light gray rectangle. I feel like it added something little. The final touches are really just tweaking things until I like how everything looks. Then I make sure to sign it with my name or my website. And if I were you, I would do the same thing. Put your name in or put your organization in or a link in, that kind of thing. It's always good to sign your work. Then we'll go ahead and export it as an image. At this point, unless I plan to bring it into another design program or share it directly to a website or something, I'll usually export it as a PNG. Um, gives you the most flexibility. And that's it. Here's our final visual. Infographics don't have to be complicated. A nice clean chart annotated with takeaways can provide a lot of value. All right, so if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Uh, it means a lot, and I will always read every single comment, promise, even the bad ones. And if you're interested in free resources like ebooks and courses, visit my resource library at freshspectrum.com library. Now get out of your head and go create stuff.